blow the bubbles, blow the bubbles so that he will have fun. Okay, so you are paired with a child. One, two, three. And don't you stop the music there and do it. Won't you dance with me? Find a place and lose it. You can do it. Won't you dance with me? Hello and welcome back to ZM2J's channel. This is Jocelyn P. Mangibin, a board certified behavior analyst and an international behavior analyst. So, if you're new to our channel, let me give you a sort of background of what we are talking about. This is about applied behavior analysis. It is a science of behavior. We focus on the functional relationships of the behavior and the environment. And we've been talking about the verbal behavior and under that is the unit of analysis, which is what we call verbal operants. And with that, last time, the last uh, video that we did is about echoic training. How do we train the child to echo you in a systematic way? I give some examples and uh, actually it's only one word but I made it two examples so that you will have the idea on how to target, what to target and not just giving your child the confusion on which um, echoic to start. Without any delay, we're going to discuss about the mand. A verbal operant mand is what we call command, request, demand, or countermand. In short, this is how we teach our child to request appropriately. Well, a long time ago, lots of researchers have done some research about what is the first verbal operant. What is really our first language? Well, believe it or not, demand or requesting is the first language of human ever. Just like with the babies. They cry when they need something. They cry when they're hungry. They cry when they need your hugs. So in short, demand or requesting is one of the most important languages that your child has to learn. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. All right, so first of all, let me show you how is it look like in the technical part. And just to let you know, don't forget to review the links below so that it will help you for the previous ideas, previous technicalities, and previous concepts that I've taught in this channel. So let's start. Let's train your child to request. So just a quick recap again, if you could remember, the A is for antecedent, B is for the behavior, and C for the consequence. SD is for the situation before the response happened, or the SD signals the availability of the reinforcer. Or in short, these are the instructions, or these are the things that you want your child to do something so that he or she can receive the reinforcer. Yes, it's a bit technical, but I hope you can click the link below that shows how it goes, okay? But now I'm going to add more information about it. We're going to focus for MAND. What is the formula for MAND? Now, it looks like SD or discriminative stimulus response and the reinforcer. However, for the MAND, we need something in here. Something is added. M-O. What is M-O? Motivating operations. These are all the motivators. It alters the behavior of the child or it alters the value of the reinforcers on that specific time. Which means if your child is hungry, then seeing a cookie here, Seeing a cookie will be an SD that signals that the reinforcer is available. So, he has to request for cookie. Yeah? Request for cookie before you can get, give the cookie. The only thing you need to remember for demand or requesting, whatever is requested, that is the reinforcer. 
For example, your child requested for a pencil, for your, uh, your child requested for a tissue, then the reinforcer will be a tissue and nothing else. So I hope it's clear. For demand, we need motivating operations so that it will be effective, okay? Because without motivating operations, we cannot let your child request, okay? Because if your child doesn't like the item, so the value is down and he will not request for it. But if your child likes the item, of course, he will request for that. Lots of things we can train your child with, but all you have to do is remind yourself, is my child motivated with this thing? What is the motivation that I can create with my environment? The only challenge in um, training a child how to request is if your child is vocal or non-vocal. Because most of the time with the non-vocal kids, with my previous clients, if they really cannot um, emit any words from their mouth then or any sounds from their mouth, then we are using the text or picture exchange communication systems, which has six stages for you to train with. And it has separate training. Now, practically, how do we train your child to request? First of all, you should bear with the child, okay? That means you have to build your rapport with the child. You have to show that you have the reinforcer and you are actually a reinforcer. So in our clinical setting, after the assessment, we can see what level the child is. And so we know what prompt is needed, how do we train the child, and what are the things that the child Want so that it is easier for us to build our rapport to the child using those items that are his or her favorite. Now, please take note that you need to keep all the items that are very high or what you call the favorite items of your child in value so that when you put it out one at a time in front of him, it will he will really come to you and it will start with your pairing with him. What is pairing? It is very important because when you don't have rapport with your child, it starts with social play, like you're going with this flow, like you're not giving demand right away. That is pairing. The moment you are paired properly with your child and not much demand, that's the time you can check one at a time of the motivators. Put it up, for example, bubbles. He likes bubbles so much. Blow the bubbles, blow the bubbles so that he will have fun. Okay, so you are paired with a child. This is what we call non-contingent reinforcement, which means you're giving the reinforcement even without requesting first. In that way, you are paired with a child. Now, if your child, you feel that your child is enjoying and uh, he's a little bit comfortable with you, you will see it. You will see that he's not running away from you. He's more comfortable near you. He's smiling. He's like almost wanting to have the bubbles all the time. Then the motivation is there. He wants the bubbles. You train the bubbles. So we have uh, different kinds of kids. It really depends on the level of the child and how you're gonna train. But if the child doesn't speak at all, I will give you a picture of how we are training the child. So if he is not speaking, but he likes the bubbles, what we're gonna do is, we just put the bubble stick near our eye, and when he looks, we say, bubbles, that's nice requesting for bubbles, and then we blow. So we do that lots of times, so that the eye contact, as a man, as a form of request, will be stronger. And if he really cannot speak at all for how many like weeks or we could say months, then we will transfer, as what I said, to the PECS, the Picture Exchange Communication System. Now, if the child has word, then we can train the child with echo. Okay, so still the same situation. You blow the bubbles, blow the bubbles, give it freely, and then pause. He will look at you, but he is verbal. Then when he look at you, you have to ask him to echo. Remember the echoic? Bubbles. Say bubbles. Then he will echo bubbles. Nice asking bubbles. Then blow. Okay, no delay. 
and then later on when it's really stable that he's echoing give some two seconds delay before you will prompt to bubbles again and then when the two seconds is stronger make it like four seconds delay until such time that you don't need to prompt the child now there's a technique another technique of training for echoing the other one that i said is time delay technique okay you're delaying it two seconds four seconds and then you're not prompting okay so the the other one is the partial and then initial sound so for example first round you're giving it freely and then you pause he will look at you and you will say bubbles that is the first part okay that's the first part of a COVID. and then the next round when you fade it out you will say bub so just the half of the word okay but it's immediate there's no delay this is another kind of prompting it really depends on your child which one will work for your child okay and then the third one will be the initial only so you blow the bubbles and then you pause and then you would say but oh all right so that is a third until such time you can fade it away so two prompts we did there number one is the time delay and number two is the verbal prompt but it is fading out let me give you some examples see the videos that is coming up Jeraf. 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 good boy so you see that the child was echoing so the therapist is saying the name of the item giraffe giraffe but the child wants to get the item but she blocked neutrally she's not like overreacting just block neutrally and then giraffe then he says giraffe and then give so that is the first stage of teaching how to request an item there's also requesting like the action like pick me up or carry me something like that but with the kids that are smaller just take a look at this so you see in the video the child requested up which means lift me up and put me on this structure so we can also train the children how to request for action play with me come here something like that so that they get they can really express themselves and they can tell you what they want what they need now sometimes if the child graduated with the echoic part we can use still one item but you can pair your instruction what do you want so that it will be paired in the instruction what do you want and in the future he can easily answer that with what he wants so we can start with one item first of what do you want like this one very good it's clear one item in front of the child and you will ask what do you want one time not too much give like two seconds or three seconds and then ask again what do you want and then if he doesn't say then you prompt him the name of the item now sometimes if the child is a little bit done with the echoing so he can he can echo done and you don't need actually to echo sometimes sometimes we need two items to show to them what do they want let's see the video one uh, nanny, nanny, cat. Thick one. Uh, this one. Which one? Uh, nanny. You want cat or tiger? Cat. Cat. Okay. The last video that I'm gonna show you are two items, but on those items, he really needs to specify which one because it's about the vehicle, which vehicle you want. Okay. Which one you want? Cat. Which car? Think it, please. So, that's how we teach our child to speak what he wants, especially when it comes to items or tangibles. Now, there are some kids who are throwing the toys away 
after playing okay so this is very critical because you need to train your child instead of throwing you need to train your child to say all done so when he threw it get back pick up no need to tell something no need to, to comment on the behavior just get the item and then bring it back in front of the child if he doesn't like it because he threw it then let the child hold it prompt your child all done prompt your child to push it away that's nice saying all done and then make sure you put the item away so that's how you train how to say all done means i don't like this thing anymore i'm not enjoying anymore so instead of the child throwing it away make sure you train the alternative behavior which is saying all done so before your child throw the item you need to be alert to catch the opportunity to train your child to say all done while pushing the item properly so for the non-vocal the all done we used to do this all done but we are saying it all done and then we're fading it by the physical all done and then we're still saying it okay so that's how we train the all done part when the child doesn't want the item anymore or when the child doesn't want the situation all done okay all done now sometimes the child wants the item so much okay that you cannot stop sometimes how do we train it so we need to train more or more time or more play in this part we are using timer actually in the center so we we need to set the timer and then let the child hear it beep, beep, beep. oops your playing is all done you will be the one to say it but you need to train him before he whines or before he shouts or screams you have to train him more play or more car or more and blah 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 so or more as simple as that in such a way instead of them screaming because you're taking away something from them they can request more please more or of the item okay or more car more bubbles all right give at least one two or maximum three rounds of okay that's nice asking for more reinforce it first and then later on how you fade it away sometimes we use coupon more coupon take it off okay you have one more left nice asking for more and when the timer beeps always say play is all done or car is all done so that he will be paired with the instructions before he screams you will say more of the item or more play or more nice asking for more and then you see if the more coupon is done that's the last round then you can say look nice asking for more you reinforce for first saying for more but you don't have more time anymore you can have next time okay we can do this instead so that's the time you are denying an access now then you have to redirect with something else all right so let's have a quick recap now how to train requesting or mand to your kids okay so there are tangibles or food you can train them with you can either delay with the timing or I or fade out your words and also you can let your child request for the action or even when your child is really bored with a toy or done with a toy you can train your child to say all done and the last but not the least you can even train your child to say more please or more time more play and you can use even the coupon for that. It's up to you on how many rounds. One, two, three. Do not make it like always three. Do not make it always two. Make it shuffle. So just give one time, two times, or three times of more. And then get ready to redirect your child to something else if he doesn't have more time left. So that's it, guys. I hope it's clear with you how to at least practically train your child how to request please don't forget if you train your child using this technique leave a comment below so that we can see if you're coping up with our techniques thank you thank you so much for staying with us and uh, don't forget to share this video hit the like button and also hit the notification bell so that you will be updated for our next videos god bless you all bye